Okay. So, uh, can you please confirm if the audio and video is clear to everyone? Is the audio and video clear to everyone? Come on, guys. Wonderful, wonderful. So let's start the session. Let's start the session now. Now, so uh, first of all, uh, welcome to the ACCA SBR practice to pass session for March 24 examinations. Okay. Now, in this session, we'll be discussing a past paper. Okay. So now every paper, as you know, has four questions, right? Section A is divided into two questions and section B is divided into two questions. Now, what we will take, take in this four day session, I will be taking every day one question. Every day I'll be taking one question of the latest past paper that is December 23 examinations. Okay, and we will discuss the question in the depth of it. Now, what exactly we are we going to discuss? So we'll understand how to read the question, how to interpret the requirement, how to approach towards an answer, how to write an answer, what are the mistakes that you can do in the exam. What are the mistakes that the examining team is trying to bring out to you that you are that you have to avoid? What are the points that the examining team uh, is suggesting you to adopt in your answer? So all those things we are going to uh, refer now. But before that, before that, what we are required to do here is we need to understand the top 10 tips for success in ACCA SBR. Okay, so we'll be discussing the top 10 tips and trust me, if you follow these tips, there is no one who can stop you from passing the SBR examinations. Okay, uh, though in my regular batches, I have always tried to uh, say these things multiple times. But again, in this session, I will try to reiterate the same thing. What are top 10 tips? So the first tip is coverage is more important than the perfection. Okay, so rather than becoming an expert in any topic, try to cover all the topics, try to cover all the topics. Okay, second point is uh, prefer understanding the concepts rather than mugging up the standard name and the number because the examining team has clearly mentioned that there is no credit allowed for the standard name and the numbers. They want you to know the concepts. They want you to know the applicability of the concepts to the given scenario. They don't want you to know the name and the number. They don't want your knowledge of name and number, which anyways you can uh, see from the Google or see from the standards. They want how well you can apply the provisions of the standard to a given scenario. So focus on the applicability skills, application skills, rather than the mugging up the name and the numbers. Third point is practice at least five papers. See, today is 24th of February. You have exams on 4th of March. So how many days you have? 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, uh, 1, 2, and 3. So still you have uh, 6 plus 2, 8 days available, right? Even if you solve one past paper every day, trust me, you will get a great grip over the SBR paper. And trust me, still it is doable. Still it is doable. Even if you start, even if you start practicing the questions now, it is doable. Tejas has a query: Will we get marks if we explain, explain the standard and its relevance in a question? See, uh, depends, Tejas. What is the question asking for? Okay, if the question is asking uh, you to apply the knowledge of the standard to the given scenario and you have written the provisions of the standard correctly, you will get the marks for that also. Now, how well you are able to justify your provisions, justify the scenario, you will get the marks for that also. How well you can conclude your answer, how well you can justify the reasoning behind your conclusion, you will get the marks for that also. If there are calculations involved in the question and you have done the calculation correctly, you will get the marks for that also. Okay. So, see, understand examiner here in this case of SBR is ready to give you marks. 
but it is you have to who has to write the answer and give him the content so that he can give you the marks okay so you have to write the contents and i will i will guide you i will guide you in the due process of this top 10 tips i will guide you each and everything now my i was there in past five past papers so how to practice this five past papers how to practice this five past papers there is a process behind this practice there is a process behind this practice. Those who are attending my game changer batch definitely know this, the process. So the process behind this is, first of all, you need to uh, write a, you can say, appear for the test paper, five past papers. Now appear for one past paper, okay, appear for one past paper. Then compare your answer with the suggested answer. Identify your mistakes identify your mistakes then for those mistakes whatever mistake you have identified go and read the suggested answer properly okay now once you have read the suggested answers then go to your study text or your workbook and read the entire concept surrounding that topic okay then rewrite that answer in a correct manner then go to the examiner report then go to the examiner report and read the examiner report now how to read the examiner report you have to find two things in examiner report what stronger candidates tend to do this thing weaker candidates tend to do this thing so whatever the stronger candidate tend to do you have to adopt that whatever the weaker candidates tend to do you have to remove it off is that clear to everyone is that clear to everyone now one of the common comments from the acca examining team in their examiner report uh, they have what they have mentioned when you read the minds uh, there is a report uh, released by the examiner which they call it by reading the mind of the examiner okay reading the mind of the examiner so one of the common comment that they have given there is students write what they know rather than writing what is required okay so you should first of all understand the requirement what exactly are they asking for and then write your answer rather than just writing okay let's suppose a question on leases comes a question on lease is coming now you know the accounting treatment of lease liability properly but the question is asking for sale and lease back now you are writing the accounting table lease of lease liability is this much you have to calculate lease liability like this you have to do it like this you have to do it like this no not required let's suppose a question on uh, uh, revenue is coming and the question is asking you please assess if it is the revenue control is getting transferred at a point in time or over a period of time now there will be a set of student who will write revenue or oh, revenue recognition we do in five steps then he will write this is five step number one step number two step number three step number four step number five now in step number one we do this, this thing step number two uh, we identify transaction price in step number three uh, we identify this thing uh, Moid, uh, yes, this will be recorded. So in step number one, we identify the contract. Step number two, we identify the performance obligation. Step number three, we identify the transaction price. Step number four, we uh, allocate the transaction price to each of obligations. And step number five, we recognize revenue. Now tell me, is the question asking you the five steps? No, the question is not asking you the five steps. Then why are you trying to write the five steps? The question is asking you what? Is the control getting transferred at a point in time or over a period of time? Then start with that paragraph only. Na? Start with that paragraph only. That is step number 5. In step number 5 also there are 3 conditions to evaluate whether the control is getting transferred at a point in time or over a period of time. So evaluate, uh, start from those 3 conditions. No need to write this much. So write what is asked rather than what you know. Is that clear everyone? Is that clear everyone? So one of the important tip that I can give you is don't write any Faltuga Gyan in the exam. Any Faltuga Gyan is not at all, uh, not at all acceptable. Okay, not at all acceptable. Like if you are watching this session and not liking this class is also not at all acceptable. So please uh, like the session guys, come on, or all of you, all of you, please like the session, hit the like button, hit the like button. 
now for that how to write an answer how to write the answer so always understand first of all start with conclusion give your conclusion this is what is the conclusion but only the conclusion is sufficient no then write the provision of the standard this is what the this is what the standard is saying and then give your analysis without the analysis without the analysis your answer is exactly the same like food without salt tell me will you like the food without without salt will you like the food or will you enjoy the food without salt will you eat the food without salt no Ex exactly even the examiner will not accept your answer without an analysis so analysis is very much needed if you are not writing analysis you are not getting marks for that okay and trust me in acca sbr paper 70 percent marks that you get or rather than 70 i can say 80 percent marks that you get is for the analysis is for the analysis and only i am not moving the screen only they just okay and only 20 percent marks is for calculations okay only 20 to 30 percent marks is for the calculations rest everything is for the analysis is that clear everyone now sir can i do selective study and go in the uh, go appear in the exam no my dear friends selective study is not at all recommended in acca sbr specifically selective study is not at all recommended okay there are times there are times that the exam is asking you a question from a very small standard and for a quite big marks so selective study is not at all recommended if you are doing selective study if you are doing selective study you are preparing yourself for the worst okay as i have told in the very start itself coverage is important you have to cover the entire syllabus Uh, Bilal can uh, is asking can we cover, grasp the entire syllabus in these few days yes you can do that provided you have studied uh, properly till now definitely you can do it definitely you can do it okay now uh, additionally Bilal we have taken up the revision sessions for all the chapters of uh, SBR if you want to see I'll just show it to you SBR group accounting we have covered, SBR financial instruments we have covered. Now here in these sessions, we have helped you revise each and every topics of SBR. So definitely, definitely this will help you out, I believe so. Oh, my uh, past student has come here to wish me. Thanks, Nishan. Thanks, Nishan. Now, the next is in the exam, in the exam, while you are writing your paper, understand in every paper of SBR, they will give you questions of around 20, 30 to 35 marks, which you can score very easily, which you can score very easily. Now, uh, sir, what type of questions calculate goodwill? Now tell me, calculate goodwill is something which you have already studied in FR, right? Calculation of goodwill is something which you have already studied in FR, right? Revenue accounting, revenue accounting is something which you have already studied in FR. Now the same topic is coming up here again, right? So there will be definitely, there will be questions of around 30-35 marks which you can easily write, which you can easily cover off, right? So first of all, try to cover off the easy questions okay try to cover 30 25 marks in the first one hour okay and now in the next two hours do the brainstorming for the rest do the brainstorming for the rest do the brainstorming for the rest okay now ethical questions guys many of many of the should i can say 80 percent of the students doesn't know doesn't know how to write an answer on ethics you know what you know what the content of the answer that they write in the ethics is perfect 
is perfect but still when i am evaluating their notebook i am giving them only 3 out of 10 or 4 out of 10 but not more than 7 not more than 6 or 7 but they have written the content for 7 to 8 marks but still i am not giving the marks why because the way they have written is wrong so then how to write it off that i will be discussing in the day two that is tomorrow we'll be discussing the question on ethics wherein i will be discussing with you how exactly you need to structure your ethical answer so that you can score good marks in ethics there is a wrong notion in the mind of the students that i have to write very long answer in the ethics no my dear friend you are not required to write long answer in ethics you are just required to write 10 points for 10 marks that's all that's all so ethics you might be considering as a difficult topic but it is not ideally it is not it is not a difficult topic it is one of the easiest topic but yes you just need to know the approach to write the answer that's all nothing else then how to write your answer first of all read the requirement read the requirement then read the case study and then write your answer sir, sir why are you telling to read the requirement first why are you telling to read the requirement first now tell me in a question of sbr see let's suppose this is a question of sbr i do have the question of sbr see this is question number one of sbr covering page number one covering page number two covering page number three now tell me if you are reading this this much big a question if you are reading this much bigger question tell me honestly will you will you remember by the time you are reaching here will you remember what you studied here tell me honestly tell me will you remember what you studied the topic here what was the context here will you remember that no you won't remember no you won't remember then how to do how to resolve the challenge so what you have to do rather than reading the question first of all rather than rather than reading the case study first of all read the requirement first read the requirement first okay how exactly i'll show it to you just allow me a moment please so this is a question number one okay starting from here is the case study case study case study case study case study now uh, six uh, exhibit three this is also a case study okay uh, now i have not given it here that is an excel file separate excel file that i that i will show it to you later on so but all these are case study then comes the requirement so now rather than reading this case study which i will totally skip okay what i will do first of all i will read the first part of the question i'll show it to you just allow me a moment allow me a moment to uh, show it to you okay i'll open the accf practice platform to show it to you just allow me a moment please Can you see the screen? Just a moment, it is loading, I believe. SPR exams. Can you see ACC practice platform, guys? Can you please confirm if you can see ACC practice platform? Cool. 
I'll open up the December 23 resume. So this is how your exam will start. Next. Now. See, first of all, you have to read this one. First of all, you have to read this one. A small part which will give you the thought, which will give you an idea. Okay, this is what the question is asking about. First of all, you have to read this. First of all, you have to read this. And then you will get a fair idea. Okay, this is what is the question asking about. Then after that, there are three exhibits. Exhibit 1, Exhibit 2, Exhibit 3. Tell me, will you go and read the exhibits now? No. Then what will you do? You will directly jump to the requirements. Directly jump to the requirements. Now, read the requirement just once. Just read the requirement once. Sir, why are you asking us to read the requirement first? Because once you read the requirement and then you are reading the exhibits, you will get to know that, okay, in this exhibit, what is my answer? What exactly you need to find in this one? Okay, you will get to know what exactly you need to find in this exhibit. You will get an objective behind reading the ob uh, uh, exhibit. You will get an objective behind reading the exhibit. So how will you approach? I am trying to say it again. I will say it again. First of all, read the introductory paragraph of the question. First of all, read the introductory paragraph of the question. Then go to the requirements and read the requirements in detail and then go to the exhibits and then go to the exhibits. Is that clear to everyone how you are required to approach a answer or a question? Is that clear to everyone? Wonderful. Now, coming back to our topic. Many a times students ask me, sir, uh, am I required to match the level of suggested answer? No, my dear friends, you are not at all expected to uh, match the level of suggested answer. Then, sir, why are you telling us time and again to read the suggested answer? I will tell you again and again to read the suggest suggested answer. Why? Because once you read the such answer, you will get to know, okay, this is how I need to write my answer. But now, when, when you see, when you understand, okay, this is how I need to write the answer. Are you expected to meet that level? No. But then what is my expectation? My expectation is you are required to reduce the gap, not match the level. Okay, not match the level, but the expectation is to reduce the gap as much as possible, but not to match that level. Neither me nor the ACC examining team is expecting you to match the level. Is that clear everyone? Is that clear everyone? Now, professional marks. Professional marks. How to score professional marks? See, there are total of four professional marks. In question number one, there are no professional marks. In question number one, there are no professional marks. In question number two, there are two professional marks. In question number three, there are two professional marks. And in question number four, there are again uh, zero professional marks. Since I am discussing only question number one today, I will not be talking about uh, professional marks. When tomorrow I will be discussing about question number two, so I will definitely discuss how to score professional marks okay but yes i have separately uh, made up a video on how to score professional marks if you want to watch that you can do that otherwise otherwise you can uh, you can continue uh, in the tomorrow's class again i will be discussing how exactly you have to score good marks in uh, this four professional marks okay how will you score good marks in this four professional marks is that clear to everyone is that clear to everyone 
सो दीज आर द टॉप टेन टिप्स दैट आई विल रिकमेंड यू फॉर ए सी सी एस बी आर पेपर इन द लास्ट टेन डेज प्लीज अडॉप्ट दिस अप्रोच ओके इफ यू आर स्टार्टिंग योर एस बी आर नाउ देन ऑल्सो यू आर रिक्वायर टू अडॉप्ट दिस अप्रोच ओके दीज आर दैप टॉप टेन टिप्स विच विल ऑलवेज 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 हेल्प यू इन द प्रिपेरेशन ऑफ एस सी सी एस बी आर एंड इट विल गिव यू अमेजिंग रिजल्ट इफ यू अडॉप्ट दिस टॉप टेन टिप्स इज दैट क्लियर एवरी वन टेल मी गाइज कम ऑन इज दैट क्लियर एवरी वन wonderful wonderful now additionally just uh, one more minute i'll take i have made up two videos sorry you are not required to play now uh, which you have to watch okay this is last 10 days strategy which you have to adopt and exam day checklist which you need to watch which because once you watch the exam day checklist there are few common mistakes which everyone does and i don't want you to do it i why i am making this video because in the last attempt there was one of my student one of my uh, bright student who was unable to give the exams because he made a blunder okay he made a blunder so uh, that's the reason i am making this mistake uh, this video so that uh, you guys should not make this video should not make this uh, face these challenges coming to the question number 1 now before that paper pattern i believe all of you know section a section b divided into two marks uh, two two parts of 50 marks each of 50 marks each now section 1 is having question number 1 question number 2 of 30 marks which will come from groups question number 2 will be of 20 marks which will come from ethics question number 3 and 4 will 4 will be 25 marks each and one of them will come from current issues tejas is asking sir can you please uh, help on how to uh, use exam kit if you have solved exam kit till now tejas very good but if you have not solved exam kit so far okay then i will recommend you only one thing i can recommend you only one thing tejas this is your exam kit okay this is your exam kit now please uh, keep it aside please keep it aside you are not required to touch the exam kit now then what to do sir you have to do this thing you have to do this thing where exactly it went you have to follow this one sir why this one because if you are solving past papers you are solving questions only no but more relevant questions past five papers if you are solving you are solving more relevant questions okay that too in acca practice platform okay go use this approach use this approach if you have but if you have already solved prat, uh, exam kit or practice kit good it's good but if you have not don't if you have not solved then don't solve also don't start the burden don't take a additional burden of solving it now okay because if you start also you won't be able to complete and it will just give you a negative mindset that okay i started exam kit but i was not able to complete it off okay so why to take up any negative mindset now in, in at the last juncture of the exam don't take any negative solve this one solve this one and i can guarantee you i can give you my guarantee that this will be a uh, more helpful at this juncture this will be more helpful is that clear tejas now uh someone is asking me sir please explain joint venture and joint operation i have already uh, uh discussed about joint venture and joint operation in my revision video for the groups i will uh, recommend you uh, to go and watch my revision video of the groups wherein you can get not only for joint venture joint operation you will get for each and everything the entire groups it will uh, be a serve as a revision for you okay today i am very much specific that i will be discussing a past paper and discuss how exactly you need to apply your knowledge to the given scenario application of knowledge to the given scenario now all of you please give me a thumbs up i will start the session now please give me a thumbs up i will start the session now
they just if you need confidence again the solution is past papers solution is past papers solving five past papers is better than doing anything in the world okay i can guarantee you if you solve these five papers in the approach which i have recommended you will uh, solve one paper every day five papers will be done in five days i can guarantee you at the on the sixth day you will ping me that sir this mess this approach was helpful for me and i am feeling very much confident now solve past papers five past papers in the approach which i have recommended this is my personal guarantee to you but yes you have to use the approach which i have told okay solving the paper comparing with the suggested then uh, reading the examiner report then resolving the uh, wrong answers if you do it this way i can guarantee now question number 1 question number 1 kabilo company is the parent company of a group whose financial year ends on 31st december 2000x5 the following exhibits available on the left hand side of the screen uh, provide uh, relevant to the you are able to see the yes you should be able to see it off yeah so it says the Kabilo company is the parent company of a group whose financial year ends on 31st December 2006. The following exhibits available on the left hand side of the screen provide information relevant to the question. So this introductory paragraph is just trying to give you the basic nuances which we will be discussing in the question. Now, exhibit number one will talk about acquisition of a uh, Trudos company. We'll talk about acquisition of Trudos company. Exhibit number two will talk about financial instruments. And exhibit number three will talk about consolidated statements. Now, just read the requirements. It says uh, exhibit number one, that is acquisition of Trudos company, provides information regarding the acquisition of Trudos company and other information relevant to complete the console cash flows. Relevant to complete the console cash flows. Now, if when I am reading this one, what are you trying to understand? So basically, this introductory paragraph is trying to give you the uh, basic intent that what exactly are we going to discuss in this question. Financial instruments contains information about number of financial instruments held by the Kabilo group. Exhibit number three, consolidated of statements. This includes the draft extracts of the console statement of cash flows together with the extracts of the finalized console SOFP for the year and this much including comparative figures including comparative figures okay so this is like a pre-populated screen so exhibit number three is like a pre-populated screen okay which will give you the draft console cash flow uh, and then final console sofp and final console pnl the extracts of it the extracts of it are given which uh, using which you might be required to fill the pre-populated response area pre-populated response area is the introductory paragraph clear to all of you now tell me what shall i do shall i go and read the exhibits shall i go and read the exhibits now no i won't go and read the exhibits then i will directly jump to the requirements i will directly jump to the requirements now so let's read the requirement first and then i'll come to the then i'll come to the exhibits now what is the requirement saying using exhibit number 1 using exhibit number 1 adjust the pre populated spreadsheet to prepare revised extracts of the operating and the investing activities of the console statement of cash flow for the kabilo group for the year ended 31st december 2006 5 now what is the question saying what is the question saying so if the question is saying adjust the pre populated spreadsheet to prepare the revised extracts of operating and investing console cash flow might be the pre 
populated spreadsheet that is given to you will have some mistakes which you have to identify and then rectify the pre-populated screen okay then you have to rectify the pre-populated screen but how will you find the mistakes how will you find the mistakes by reading exhibit number one by reading exhibit number one then what is the question number two saying explain the adjustments required to the correct the operating and investing activities of the consolidated statement of cash flows for the Camilo group for the year ended 31st December 2005. Now the question number two is saying 1A2 is saying that whatever adjustment you have done in part one please explain all your adjustments please explain all your adjustments. So now understand see this 14 marks is pure pure calculation. This 14 marks is pure, pure calculation and this 10 marks is pure, pure explanation, is a pure, pure explanation. Now, when uh, you will go and read the examiner report, the examining team is saying, I will take you to the examiner report and so what the examining team is saying here. Weaker answers to A part 2 tend to repeat the workings from A1 with minimal explanation why the corrections were required. So now what you are required to do in when you are solving the when you are rectifying the pre-populated response area just do the calculations there. Are you required to explain anything there? No my dear friends no 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 you are not expected to explain even a single concept there just do the calculations in part number one so for doing the calculations you will get easily 14 marks so this 14 marks you can say is a gift from the examiner is the easy marks which i was talking about you remember i was talking about some easy marks you remember i was talking about some easy marks this 14 marks is that easy marks <coughs> then when you will come to point number two you have to explain what you have done the calculations whatever calculations you have done you have to explain it off okay now it is uh, your choice whether you want to answer first one and then explain in second or or you want to explain first in second answer and then go to the first answer and do the adjustments choice is yours choice is yours but if you ask me sir what will you recommend i will recommend you to do the adjustments first why because when you see the numbers mathematically we as indians are good at numbers we as indians are good at numbers okay so first of all solve the number calculation part now once the calculation part is done then you can just explain what you have calculated explain what you have calculated and with the sufficient logic of why you have adjusted that okay is that clear everyone is that clear everyone guys uh one thing that i request from you guys is to make this session as interactive as possible and that's the reason why i am conducting a live session otherwise i could have uploaded the recordings of this also right so i will i just want to request you please make this session as interactive as possible by your comments by your queries by your questions now so now what will we do we will go and read the exhibit number one we'll go and read the exhibit number one and then make adjust the pre-populated response area then adjust the pre-populated response area so let's read exhibit number one exhibit number one says Kabilo company acquired 80 percent of one lakh equity shares of trudos company
okay acquired 80% of 1 lakh uh, shares that was held, that was having of trodas company i acquired 80% shares then what does the question say further it says on 30th june 2005 on 30th june 2005 guys uh, can you take the screenshot of this question can you take the screenshot of this part and keep it with you because it will be difficult for me to uh, go uh, this and here and there time and again because i have the question with me i have the question with me so i can read from here and explain you in this file explain you in this file okay not here uh, he notes i can explain you in this file but if you take a screenshot it will be easy for me can you do that all of you i'll show the screen again can you please take the screenshot of this exhibit number 1 please ping done once you are done if you are done taking a screenshot please let me know i'll move to my next screen So it says Kabilo company acquired 80% of the 1 lakh equity shares of Trudos company on 30th of June 20x5. Okay. Now the consideration that Kabilo company paid to Trudos company, the consideration that was paid was a dollar five per share. Now, how many shares did I acquire? Tell me how many shares Kabilo company acquired? 80,000 shares. So, how much consideration was paid? 400,000 in cash. In cash. Now, it says further, further, I also gave one share, okay, one Kabilo's company share for every four shares acquired. Now, how many shares I acquired? 80,000 shares I acquired. Okay, so I am giving the Kabilo company is giving one shares of his own for every four shares that is acquiring. So how many shares are acquired? 80,000. So how many shares the Kabilo company will give? 80,000 by four is 20,000 shares. Now what is the price of per share of Kabilo company? 13 per share. So what is the amount? What is the amount? Can you tell me what is the amount? What is the amount? 8,000 uh, by 40, 20, 2 lakh 60,000. 260,000 and this is called as fair value of shares exchange now what is the value of investments in that case what is the value of investments total value of investments or the purchase consideration as we say is 6,60,000 or 660,000 660,000 is that clear to everyone is that clear to everyone good now, what does the next paragraph says? It says the carrying amount of net assets reported on by Trudos company on 30th June 2005 was this much. Okay. So it says the net assets acquired, the net assets acquired were equals to 747600. But this was the carrying amount of net assets. The carrying amount of net assets given in the question on on 30th June 2005, carrying amount on 30th June 2005 was this much. But now tell me, whenever the parent company acquires the subsidiary company, it acquires the net assets of subsidiary company on date of acquisition at its fair value on date of acquisition. So we have to do the fair value adjustment. We have to do the fair value adjustment. Now, what is the fair value adjustment? It says only fair value adjustment on acquisition to plant which had a fair value of 50,000. So I will write here fair value adjustment was 50,000 was 50,000 above its carrying amount. Fine. Now further the question mentions that the group company pays tax at the rate of 30%. Now what is the relevance of tax here? What is the relevance of tax here? Now understand my dear friends, uh, go to IAS 12. Now, when you go to IH12, what happens? Carrying amount of asset. It gets increased when you revalue the asset. It gets increased when you revalue the asset. But tell me, will tax base increase? When you, whenever you do the fair valuation of the asset, will it increase or decrease my tax base? No, the tax base remains constant. So hence, this, uh, hence this fair value gain or loss 
becomes my temporary difference becomes my temporary difference and now since a uh, carrying amount of the asset is more than the tax base it is called as taxable temporary difference on which i will recognize deferred tax liability at the rate of 30 percent so my deferred tax liability will be equals to 15,000 at the rate of 30 percent will be equals to 15,000 is that clear to everyone my dear friends is that clear to everyone so now what is the deferred tax liability that you will recognize 15,000 15,000 is the deferred tax liability which you will recognize now so what is the fair value of net assets on date of acquisition so can you please calculate can you please calculate the amount will be 747 600 plus 50,000 minus 15,000 is equals to 782 600 is the fair value of net assets on date of acquisition tell me is that clear everyone is that clear everyone now the taxation figure in the statement of P and L uh, ended 31st December 2005 was this much and this figure has been included in the tax paid within the draft statement of cash flows. Okay, fine. We'll discuss over this one. Okay. So, uh, tax provision for current year is uh, 385,600. Okay. And they, they are saying that this figure is uh, treated as a cash outflow in cash flow statement okay we'll see to it we'll discuss about it we will discuss about it hold on for the time being hold on for the time being because we have to read the question first of all it is then only we will understand the uh, understand what exactly or how exactly we will uh, treat the questions first of all let's read the requirement uh, or let's read the case study first of all fully so we have read it till here we have read it till here now the next part can you please take a, sc a screenshot for this part also my dear friends can you please take the screenshot for this part also? Only this part. Take a screenshot and uh, ping done in the comment box. Ping done in the comment box. So I'll move ahead. Is it done? Wonderful. So now, it says what? The group finance controller has accurately uh, completed the console statement of financial position. It says SOFP is correct. Console SOFP is correct. Console P and L is correct, but uh, console cash flow is in draft stage. Is in draft stage. Is in draft stage. Okay. Now the financial controller has not yet uh, recorded or considered the impact of acquisition of Trudos company on the console. Okay. So this is uh, this is uh, not considering the impact of the impact of acquisition of Trudos. Okay. Now, so it says the statement of cash flows for movements in inventories, trade receivables, trade payables uh, and property plan equipment have been calculated by simply taking the difference in year and balances. Uh, Mr. Uh, Jaluiz, okay. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm unable to pronounce your name correctly. Uh, I again, I'm telling it again and again that uh, if you are asking me any query except for the topic which I am discussing today, I am very sorry that I won't be able to take it up. But yes, I am ensuring that all the topics which you are asking the treatment is already covered in the revision session for the group accounts. Okay. 
Now, the statement of cash flow figures for the movements of inventories, trade receivables, trade payables and PPE have been calculated by considering simply the differences. Now tell me, when you prepare cash flow statement, when you prepare the cash flow statement, do you simply take the movement of uh, inventory balance or trade receivables or uh, trade papers? Is just the movement, is just the movement I will take to cash flow? No. I try to identify what is the amount collected from the trade receivables. I try to identify what is the amount paid to trade payables. I try to identify what is the uh, PPE acquired during the year. Okay, so that what you have to do it in this also. But they have just sent the movements. They have just sent the movements. Now further. It says goodwill was impaired. Now come here now. Goodwill was impaired during the year. During the year, goodwill is impaired. Now tell me, uh, do you think uh, goodwill impairment loss is given in the question? Tell me, do you think goodwill impairment loss is given in the question? No, it is not given. Meaning thereby, you have to calculate the goodwill impairment loss. Meaning thereby, you have to calculate the goodwill impairment loss. Sir, how, sir, how will I calculate it off? Just read the question first of all clearly. You will get everything. You will get the answer to each and everything. Then there are no other goodwill impairment within the group. Okay, fine. The depression charge is uh, this much. There were no disposals of non-current assets by the group during the year, although there were some additions by paid for by the group. Now, with this question, can you please uh, do one thing? Can you please do one thing? Can you find out the value of goodwill? Can you find out the value of goodwill at least? So because Cabillo's policy is to measure NCI at fair value on the date of acquisition. So using this, can you please find out the... Can you please find out what is the value of goodwill? So let us do that. Let us do that. Let us calculate the goodwill now. Working note. working note or I can say it like this question number one part a sub part one working note number one calculation of goodwill now tell me what is the value of investments what is the value of investments? So investments is paid by cash consideration and fair value of shares exchange. Cash is being paid as 400,000. Now fair value of share exchange is 260,000. So total value of investment is 660,000. Now what is the fair value of NCI on date of acquisition? Guys, I'm solving the question in depth just because that's the reason why i have divided the entire paper into four days because i want you to give understand or gain a in-depth understanding of sbr fair value of nci on date of acquisition so how to understand the fair value on date of acquisition now tell me nci is holding how many shares nci is holding how many shares can you tell me so there were total 100,000 shares of nci out of which 80,000 was held by Kabilo, so 20,000 will be held by NCI. Now, what is the fair value per share of the uh, this Trudas group? Fair value per share is 8. Fair value per share is 8, right? See, the fair value of Kabilo's company and Trudas company was this and this respectively. So, it is 8. Multiply by 8. So, it is 160,000 fair value of NCI. Now minus what is the fair value of net assets on date of acquisition? Tell me we have already calculated that 782 600, 782 600. So let's do that minus 782 600 which will give you which will give you goodwill on date of acquisition. Goodwill on date of acquisition. Tell, can you please calculate how much it is? 
660,000 plus 160,000 minus 782,600 is 37,400. Is that clear everyone? Is that clear everyone? Come on guys, tell me. Now, time to uh, look into the pre-populated uh, screen. Time to look into the pre-populated screen. Now, tell me, can you see the screen properly? Is it visible or do you want me to increase the font size? Is it visible? Is the uh, spirit pre populated spirit seat visible to all of you? Is the pre populated spirit, uh, spirit seat visible to all of you? right wonderful so now this is the see ideally ideally you are required to solve this in acca practice platform only so then why are you solving it in excel just because i can send this file to you along with the workings and the adjustments the excel file i will send it to you along with the workings and the adjustments to help you understand it in a better manner that's the only intent that's the only intent Okay, that's the reason I have done it in Excel. Otherwise, you are required to solve only and only in the ACCA practice platform. I believe or I and I hope and I expect that you will understand my intent behind solving it in Excel and you will solve only and only in ACCA practice platform. Is that clear to everyone? Is that clear to everyone? Wonderful. So now let's go through the pre-populated screen also. It says below are the, the extract below has been replicated in the pre-populated spreadsheet response option. Okay, fine. This is basically part of the exhibit three. Draft extract of the console statement of cash flows for the Kabilo group for the year ended 31st December 2005 is this much. Profit before taxation is given. Now tell me, is there any mistake in profit before taxation? Is there any mistake in profit before taxation? Is there any mistake in profit before taxation? No. Why? Because the question is clearly saying that the console PNL is done correctly and it is freezed, it is finalized. So we are not required to touch anything. So this is okay. This is clear. There is no adjustment required to be done to this one. Depreciation. Depreciation, the question is specifying. The question is already given you the amount of depreciation. And this is matching with that amount. Can you please rectify? Can you please verify? Can you please verify? Can you please verify my dear friends? Right now. Depression is given now. Increase in inventories. Increase in inventories. Now, this might require an adjustment. So, let's highlight it off. Increase in trade and other papers. This might require an adjustment. So, highlight it off. I don't know how much or by what reason, but this might require an adjustment. Okay. So, this might require an adjustment again. Taxation paid might require an adjustment again. So, let's highlight it off. Now, cash flow from operating. Now, acquisition of PP might require an adjustment. So, highlight it off again. Consideration paid, not here calculated. Definitely, it will require an adjustment. So, highlight it off. Highlight it off. So, these are the adjustments that you are required to do. But before I start to make an adjustment, before I start to make an adjustment, I want you guys to know few things. I want you guys to know few things. I'm coming back to my old screen. 
now read the question read the question so what is the it trying to say adjust the pre populated spread set adjust the pre populated spread set to prepare revised extracts of operating so basically you have to adjust this spread set to make it correct console cash flow to make it correct consolidated cash flow statements okay now i am moving on to the examiner report to give you two insights to give you two insights first of all the examiner is saying that they have identified and they have noticed that uh, some candidates some candidates have not uh, have been uh, less prepared for the console cash flow they are very much prepared for the console sofp they are very much prepared for the console p and l but they are not at all prepared or less prepared for console cash flow and even i have identified that in my regular classes that students tend to struggle in the console cash flow now tell me uh, will you go and revise console cash flow today again will you do that tell me my dear friends will you do that wonderful wonderful now one more one more thing that i want to show read this part again when i am telling that uh, the in the pre populated screen they have we have to do some adjustments we have to do some adjustments question is how to do the adjustment what should be the presentation for the adjustment what should be the presentation for the adjustment now the examining team is giving you guidance here what are they saying just read weaker answers attempted to revise the spread set by editing the original draft entries what is the meaning of this so basically whatever number that they have given the examining team has given so what students tend to do they delete off the number given by the examining team and they write the correct answer according to themselves so it says no you are not required to do this thing then some answers amended the original cells by inserting formula within the cells and other answers deleted and replaced the original entries with alternative figures so basically they are saying some answers deleted the answer, the entire entry given by the examining team other answers deleted them and modified by giving some formula of their own okay standard the examining team is saying both of them i disagree you are not required to follow this approach you are not required to follow this approach then sir what i am required to follow what am i required to follow come to the examining team guys examining examiner's report is a gold mine is a gold mine okay a few attempted to present a revised statement below the draft statement wasting valuable time now what few students try to do so they kept the examining team whatever the examining team has given they kept that as it is but below that they again below that they again uh, copy pasted the entire data and they solved it again am i required to do that no 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 then what am i required to do what am i required to do the recommended approach the recommended approach is to leave the draft numbers spends in the subsequent columns making any adjustments in the subsequent columns basically one column is given of the draft make one column for the adjustments and then make one column for the final numbers this is the correct approach this is the correct approach are you getting are you getting it my dear friends are you getting it are you getting what exactly or how exactly you need to uh, approach or uh, present your answers in the exam are you understanding this
कमान गए बोल दो मुझे डल क्यों गए आप लोग अभी तो एक घंटा हुआ है क्लास स्टार्ट हुए जस्ट वन आवर सिंस आई स्टार्टेड द क्लासेस एंड यू आर ऑलरेडी लो All of you have already done the evening snacks or dinner might be, I believe so. And you are uh, very high on energy, very high on energy. Right? So let's study, let's study guys, let's study. Now, further. so now we need to find out the what are the adjustments just a minute what are the adjustments that is required to be done now you are required to understand that okay allow me a moment please I'll come to my notes. So now in the cash flow, in cash flow, operating activities specifically, can you tell me what is the structure of cash flow? Can you tell me what is the structure of cash flow? What is the structure of cash flow? So we take profit before tax. We add any non-cash expenses. Non-cash expenses. Right now, then uh, we uh, reduce uh, non-cash income. Then we add uh, non-operating expenses then we reduce non operating income then we do plus minus working capital changes then we do minus taxes paid and this gives us cash flow from operating activities tell me yes or no tell me yes or no now pbt is given in the question we are not required to do this thing so now what are we required to do what are we required to do non cash income is there any income item given in the uh, in the adjustments in exhibit 1 that you studied was there any income item no was there any non operating expenses no was there any non operating income no all these things were not there non cash expenses there were two non cash expenses can anyone tell me what was the two non cash expense can you tell me what was the two non cash expense one was depreciation and another was goodwill impairment loss right right one was depreciation and another was goodwill impairment loss so we have to study uh, and we have to find it out so depreciation is very much sorted there is no challenge with the depreciation but there is a challenge with the goodwill impairment loss there is a challenge with the goodwill impairment loss so now we have to find out what is the amount of goodwill impairment loss we now we need to find out what is the amount of goodwill impairment loss so how to find out so we now know the for on acquisition of trad uh, tr uh, trudas company what is the name trudas or traders trudas trudas company we have gone uh, we have uh, the goodwill is this much now see the question now see the question the question is giving you the value of goodwill at the start of the year of the year the question is giving you the value of goodwill at the start of the year and at the end of the year now how will this help you out how will this help you out now come here working note number 2 i will prepare goodwill account i will prepare goodwill account
now what is the opening balance to balance b by d what is the opening balance of goodwill i have the question so i am writing it off from there okay the opening balance of goodwill is uh, 3125 300 the closing balance of goodwill is by c by d is 3668900 this data is given in the question this data is given in the question now this data is given in the question now we have we also know that on acquisition of uh, Trader's company, okay, if if I have written the wrong name, so please uh, excuse me for that. To, to a T company, what is the goodwill that we have got on acquisition of Trader's company? 37,400, T company, 37,400. Now, can you please try to balance this account, impair goodwill account? So now, so what is the amount? 3125,300 plus 3125300 plus 374 can you tell me what is the impairment of goodwill what is the amount of impairment loss of goodwill can you please tell me what is the amount of impairment okay 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 i'm so sorry uh, this data i have written wrong this data i have written wrong so sorry i'm so sorry uh, the question is saying the opening balance of goodwill is 441 100 447 400 sorry now can you please find out the impairment of goodwill so it is uh, 441 0 plus 37400 minus 447 400 is 31100 so it will you have to write by uh, p and l that is uh, goodwill impairment is how much 31100 now now you know in the question it was mentioned that the p and l that is prepared is correct the p and l that is prepared is correct right so don't you think this goodwill impairment is already will already be coming in the PNL yes because the PNL prepared is correct right so uh, this 31100 is an amount that is already recognized in the PNL as goodwill impairment loss right so what will we do what will we do what will we do we will add it to the we will add it to the profit before tax so how to do that how to do that so I'll show it to you now so now here what will we do this is the draft figure this is the draft figure okay now this is the column that you have to make for adjustments and this is the column that you have to write for final numbers okay now uh, what you have to do is you have to write here impairment loss on goodwill impairment loss on goodwill How much amount 31100 okay this is the adjustments column so now so in the final there is uh, this figure will come directly as it is in the final this figure will come directly as it is and the impairment loss will come from here so this gives you this gives you the revised profitability revised number is this clear everyone now so what you have to do here you can just write you can just write 31100 as part of working note number 2 done and you can write here 31100 simple is that clear everyone is that clear everyone tell me guys is that clear everyone we have added it back we have added it back now further what is the question saying further what is the question saying so uh, once we are done once we are done with the depression part now we have to come to the working capital changes 
we have to come to the working capital changes that is inventories trade and other receivables and trade and other payables okay now the question is saying that when i acquired uh, this t company when i acquired this uh, trudos company i acquired these assets also i acquired these assets also now when i am saying that i acquired these assets when i am saying that i that i acquired these assets guys are you facing some uh, buffering issues are you facing some buffering issues Is the video visible to all of you properly? Can you please confirm me once? Sometimes yes. Manageable? Okay, fine. I believe so it will be manageable. I don't know why it is creating some issue today. okay fine now so it says when uh, that this uh, trudos company is acquired we acquired these assets now tell me uh, now tell me understand when i am acquiring these assets when i am acquiring these assets this inventory uh, this inventory uh, and this inventory trade receivables uh, trade payables when I am acquiring these three assets, am I paying anything? Is there any cash outflow? When I am acquiring these three assets, is there any cash outflow? No, there is no cash outflow. But sir, when I acquired the subsidiary, I have paid cash to in I have paid cash to acquire the subsidiary. Yes, that is an outflow which I will consider. That is an outflow which I will consider. But specifically for inventories, for trade receivables, for trade payables, have you paid any amount? No, I have not paid any amount. But don't you think, don't you think when, when the console cash flow was prepared, what the accountant of, uh, com what the accountant has done is plus, okay, or I am writing here only parent, okay, only parent. Now, but it's closing parent plus Trudos company, right? Tell me yes or no. So meaning thereby, there are assets and liabilities of Trudos that is acquired here, okay, which is not a part of opening, but is a part of closing. Now, this assets, this assets, this assets or liabilities, whatever it is, it didn't lead to my cash outflow or inflow. Okay, it is not a cash flow item. It is not a cash flow item. So don't you think I need to remove it from there? I need to remove these assets and liabilities. I need to remove these assets and liabilities from my cash flow, right? So now understand what I need to remove. I need to remove the inventories by this amount. I need to reduce trade papers by this amount. I need to reduce trade uh, papers by this amount. Now tell me when you reduce inventory, it's a cash outflow or a cash inflow first first tell me first first if you reduce your inventory it's a trade inflow it's a cash inflow or cash outflow it's a cash inflow meaning thereby you will add when the trade receivable you will decrease it's a cash inflow you will add when you reduce trade payables it's a cash outflow you will do minus is that clear everyone is that clear everyone right now so let us adjust that in the uh, pre populated screen so how to do that inventory we will uh, increase by 256 800 inventories we will increase by how much plus 256 800 now uh, then trade receivables we will increase by how much 220300 now trade payables will decrease by how much uh, minus 
माइनस इज नेगेटिव वन What are we doing here? Basically, when I say this thing, I am trying to, I am trying to, I am trying to reduce the or eliminate the effect of eliminate the effect of increase in inventories, trade receivables or trade papers due to acquisition of a uh, T company, acquisition of Trudos company, acquisition of Trudos company. Because when I acquired Trudos company, the assets and liabilities also I acquired. So it increased my assets and liabilities, but this increase didn't lead to any cash inflow or outflow. So it's a non-cash flow item. It's a non-cash item. It's a non-cash item. So I have to reduce it off. So I'm reducing my inventory. I'm reducing my trade disperse. I'm reducing my trade payables. Okay. Now, but when you reduce your inventory, it's a cash inflow. So you have to write plus. When you reduce your trade receivable, it's a cash out inflow. So you have to write plus. When you reduce your trade payables, it's a cash outflow. You have to do minus. So now this is a comment in the examiner report also that the exam that the students tend to do mistake in the signing part the sign which sign plus sign or minus sign they have to use but i believe you have understood the logic behind that i believe you have understood the logic behind that tell me guys is that clear everyone is that clear everyone now come to the examiner report come to the examiner report see here a significant answers a significant number of answers failed to present their adjustments with the correct signage and so failed to score marks for these entries. The same issue was raised by the previous examiner report where candidates used an adjustment column to present corrections to the different figures, draft figures, but failed to but failed to show the correct plus or minus sign. So you have to be very careful of which sign you are using. So see, you have to remove the impact of these ones because it's a non cash flow item. So you are decreasing it off. You are decreasing it off. Be very careful, my dear friends. Be very careful. Funny, your question will be answered. Your question will be answered. Okay. Now, moving down the line. So we have discussed about uh, non-cash item. We have, there is no. We have discussed about working capital changes. Also, now comes taxes paid. Now comes the question of taxes paid. So come to the working note number three. Come to the working note number three. What is the amount of taxes paid? So let's prepare taxes account. Let's prepare taxes account. I believe you understand things better when you prepare this T account. taxes account now how to prepare taxes account so now tell me what is your opening liability what is your closing liability what is the uh, current year expense what is the current year uh, current expense current tax expense and default tax expense now whatever is the differential whatever is the differential is the amount that you have paid is the amount that you have paid right is that clear everyone now what is the current opening defer tax i have to see it is given in the question it is given in the question the opening and the closing figures are given in the question see here current tax liability defer tax liability so let me post the amount from this one to uh, in my notebook so current tax liability the opening amount is how much 256 900 256 900 is the opening for current tax and for defer tax it is 250000 for defer tax it is 250000 now in the closing the current tax is 364300 in the defer tax it is uh, 130000 so we have made use of goodwill uh, opening and the closing balances we have made use of defer tax opening and the closing balances we have made use of current tax opening and the closing balances okay fine now coming to the answer sheet again so this is what I have posted. Now opening I have done. Current year de current year defer tax was fifteen thousand. I believe that you remember on account of fair value adjustment it was 50, fifteen thousand. I believe that you remember. Now further come to the question. What is the current year expense? What is the current year tax expense? That was also given in the question. Current year tax expense was given in the question. I believe so three eighty five six hundred. So it says the tax figure in the statement of PNL for the current year is 385600. 385600. So this is the current year tax expense. 385600. 385 
600. Now you know the opening, you know the current year expense, you know the closing. Can you find out the balancing close paid? Can you find out the balancing amount paid? So what is the amount? Opening is 256,900 plus 250,000 is 506,900 plus this is the expense. Now closing is how much? 364,300 plus 130,000 is 494,300. Now, can you please balance this account? So it is 506900 plus 385600 plus 15,000 plus minus 494,300. That is equal to 413200. Tell me, is that clear, everyone? Is that clear, everyone? Now, what will we do here? This is working note number three. So come to the uh, come to the pre-populated screens. So what will we do here? Tell me guys, what shall we do here in this case? So here, what we will do here is taxes and paid. We will write here 413200 is the amount paid. 413200 working note number 3. Since it's a cash outflow, so I will just write 413200 minus with a minus sign with a minus sign will i consider this no this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong so i will be considering only this part is that clear so see i have rectified this one so whatever i am rectifying i will remove of the yellow sign color i will remove of the yellow color so this is clear everyone tell me is it clear now can you please find out the cash flow from operating activities can you please find out the cash flow from operating activities it is alt h u l not alt h u is equals to sum is equals to sum this is the cash flow from operating activities tell me is that clear everyone is that clear everyone funny i'll come to that point also but tell me is that clear everyone till here Wonderful. Now, moving on to the next parts. So, what's next? So, op operating activity is already done. Now, what you have to do is you have to come to the investing activity. You have to come to the investing activity. Now, in, in investing activity, there are two things. In investing activity, there are two things. There are two adjustments needed. One is the acquisition of PPE because the question is clearly saying that there are no disposals of PPE during the year. So only adjustment that will happen to PPE is the acquisitions and another is uh, acquisition of uh, T company during the year. Now tell me uh, what is the amount of cash? See when I acquired T company I gave what cash and I gave what shares. Right now, is say is when I issue shares, is it a cash outflow? No, it is not a cash outflow. But when I gave cash, is that a cash outflow? Yes, that is a cash outflow. Of how much? Of how much cash is a cash outflow? Of how much? Four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. But understand, when I acquired the subsidiary and I paid four hundred thousand and I paid four thousand thousand, understand? In that, in that subsidiary, I got an amount of twenty four thousand nine hundred. I got an amount of 24,900. What is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of this? This meaning of this is, let's suppose, let's suppose, uh, okay, in your childhood, in your childhood, definitely you would have sometime or the other you have purchased that envelope to uh, give the insert the money and give it to your relatives. Tell me in your childhood, all of you would have purchased that. Okay, let's suppose the price of that envelope is 10 rupees. And in that envelope, there is a 1 rupee coin that is stuck. Tell me what is the cost of the envelope? Tell me what is the cost of that envelope? 10 rupees or 9 rupees? I have paid 10 rupees to acquire that envelope. But in that envelope, 1 rupee coin was already stuck. So the net cost of acquiring that envelope is 9 rupees, not 10 rupees. Similarly, here also, when I acquired subsidiary, I had to pay an amount of 400,000. But 
when I acquired subsidy in the inside the subsidiary, there's a cash of 24,900. So what is my net cash outflow? So my net cash outflow is 400,000 minus an inflow of 24,900. So your net cash outflow is 400,000 minus 24,900. That is 375100. 375100. Tell me, is that clear to everyone, my dear friends? Is that clear to everyone? Right now, let us come to the So this one and adjust it off. So consideration paid uh, to acquire Trudos company is 375100. 375100. Negative sign. Why? Because it's a cash outflow. Be specific with the signs which you are using. And now what I will write here is working note number. What is the working note number? Oh, I have not written the working note number. So I will write here working note number. I write here working note number four. This is working note number four. Working note number four. Tell me, is that clear, everyone? Since this is also clear, I will remove of the color. Alt H H. I will remove of the color for this one also. Is that clear, everyone? Is that clear, everyone? Now only point remaining is PPE. Only thing is remaining is PPE. Property plant and equipment. So now what I'll do is I will prepare working note number five for that. I'll make working note number five for that. So how, what is the working note number five? Working note number five. Let us prepare PPE account. Now, what is the opening balance? So it will be two balance B by D by c by d now what is the num what is the amount on acquisition of a uh, t company okay now so it, the balances of opening and closing is given in the uh, spread, uh pre populated spread, spread set so i'll take the figures from there it is three one two five three hundred and it is three six six eight nine double zero is the amount given opening and closing now 625 600 is the amount of 600 0, 60, not 600 625 0, 060 0 is the amount of depression now when i acquired trudos company i did fair value adjustment also of 50000 right this is what is given in the question now the balancing figure is the amount of is the amount paid to bank for acquisition of new uh, for acquisition of you can say ppe for acquisition of ppe so what is the amount Three six six eight nine double zero plus six two five zero six zero minus three one two five three double zero minus four twenty one thousand minus fifty thousand is six nine seven six six zero six nine seven six six zero is the amount of pp uh, is the amount of uh, pp acquired for cash is the amount of pp acquired for cash now so let us adjust that in the pre populated screen. So here it will be working note number five. Here this will be working note number five. Uh, working note number five. What is the amount? Uh, six negative six nine seven six six uh, zero. So this completes my pre-populated screen. Tell me now, is that clear, everyone? Is that clear, everyone? So 1072 So this is how you have to uh, follow and prepare the pre-populated screen. This is how you have to prepare the pre-populated screen. I believe you have understood the uh, approach. I believe you have understood the approach behind the same.
आई बिलीव यू अंडरस्टूड द अप्रोच बिहाइंड द सेम ओके नाउ नाउ कमिंग टू क्वेश्चन पेपर सो दिस वॉज द क्वेश्चन नंबर वन रिक्वायरमेंट क्वेश्चन नंबर वन रिक्वायरमेंट वॉज यू एडजस्ट द प्री populated spread sheet have i done that yes i have done that yes i have done that i have done that now adjustment number question number 2 see now okay okay tell me this much only for 14 marks this much for 14 marks tell me don't you think this is a gift don't you think this is a gift i believe this is a pure pure gift given by the examining team to you a most easier easiest part of the question now coming to point number 2 explain the adjustments required to correct the operating and investing activities of the console cash flow now what is the question asking for what is the question asking for explain the reasoning behind your adjustments so i am coming to question number 1 a part number 2 explain the adjustments that you did in part 1 now tell me is that is that difficult ideally no but now see let's what the examining team is saying let's see what the examining team is saying examining team is saying weaker answers tend to repeat the workings from a with minimal explanation why the corrections to cash flow were required there was one more comment there was one more comment from the examining team i'm not able to find that where exactly is that comment but the comment was the students have the candidates have shown the treatment the explanation of the adjustments from the point of view of console p and l let's suppose one of the adjustment one of the adjustment was goodwill impairment now the students have explained it like this the students have explained it like this and i have in the mock test that i take in that also i have seen this type of answers goodwill impairment loss since the goodwill uh, since the goodwill uh, is at uh, nci now in cash flow is there any logic to discuss the allocation of parent and nci no there is no logic behind discussing that so now what should be right what should be written what should be written so now first of all let's list out the adjustments so the first adjustment that you did was impairment of goodwill first adjustment that you did was impairment of goodwill second adjustment that you uh, changes to working capital third adjustment that you did was uh, taxes paid and fourth adjustment that you did was investments ka cash outflow fifth adjustment that you did uh, was for a uh, ppe acquisition so these are the five adjustments that you have done in this question now how to uh, now you are not required to show the calculation here you are not required to discuss the treatment of this from pnl perspective from cash flow perspective i'll write here are you required to show calculation no in answer 2 are you required to so calculation no are you required to discuss the treatment from a pnl perspective no are you required to discuss the treatment from a sofp perspective no then what is required discuss the treatment from the perspective of cash flow statements this is required this is required this is required now what will i say impairment of goodwill since it is a non cash flow non cash item hence we are adding it back to the profit before tax changes in working capital since uh, now you have to write here that uh, since the question has taken just the movement of opening and closing okay so it includes the it includes the acquisition of uh, assets or liabilities when i am acquiring the subsidiary company but these acquisitions of assets and liabilities in line with acquisition of trudos company doesn't lead to a cash outflow or inflow hence they are non cash item so hence we have to remove these items from the increase or decrease in the working capital adjustments so now we have to remove it off from there so hence we are decreasing it off now when we decrease trade receivables when we decrease trade receivables it 
we saw with a plus sign when we decrease inventories we saw with a plus sign when we decrease inventory we saw with a uh, when we decrease trade payables we saw with a negative sign so that's what we have done so you have to write this one taxes paid so you have to say that opening uh, now you have to say the taxes paid considered in a uh, cash flow was that amount that is recognized in p and l but that is not a cash outflow so we have to find out that what was the opening liability what was the closing liability and what is the provision that we have made so first of all find total provision then find what is the closing provision the difference is the amount that we have paid during the year okay now investments you have to explain so when uh, the investments you have to explain three points see when i am acquiring the investments i have paid the purchase concession by way of shares this is not a cash outflow so it will not come here i have paid by a, a cash outflow also that is 400000 since it's a cash outflow i will rec rec recognize it here but when i'm acquiring a subsidiary i get a cash in that also so since i am getting cash inflow also so the net cash outflow is what i will record here the pp acquisition opening is given closing is given now i have to remove reduce the impact of i have to remove of the impact of assets acquired on acquisition okay because this is not a cash flow item this is not a cash flow item definitely i have acquired the assets of subsidiary but to acquire the subsidiary i am not paying any cash i am not paying any cash i am not paying any cash so i have to re reduce the impact i have to reduce the impact so i have to find out ex actually what is the amount of amount of uh, pp acquired in cash in cash so that's what you have to explain now tell me is that difficult is that difficult i don't think so Tell me 1A part 2, is that doable all of you? 1A part 2, is that doable to all of you? Coming to 1A part 3, question number 1B, not part 3, 1B, sorry, 1B. Question number, question paper. Now what is the question saying? So first of all, tell me, will we go and read the exhibit or will we read the requirement first? So first of all, we'll read the requirement. Using exhibit 2. Using exhibit 2, advise the financial controller as to how the various financial instruments, including the overdraft, should be presented in the cash flow console financial statements. Now, the question is asking, how will you present the various financial instruments? How will you present the various financial instruments in the cash flow item? So, what how will you start the answer? So, for this, you will start first of all by defining, defining what is cash by defining what is cash equivalent, by defining what is operating activity, by defining what is investment activity, by defining what is financial activity. And then whatever is given in the question, just classify them as uh, operating, investing, act financing or cash and cash equivalents. Let me go to the exhibits. Let me go to the exhibits. So it says the Kabilo group has a number of financial instruments presented within console statement of financial position. Some group entities which had surplus cash resources, which had surplus cash resources acquired debentures in other non-group entities. Now when they acquire debentures, when they acquire debentures, so what is happening? This is a financial asset. When you acquire the debentures, it's a financial asset. That is a contractual right to receive cash. Okay, it's a financial asset. So you have where will you say, where will you record this one? Tell me. Where will you record this financial asset? So you will record this financial asset in investing activity. Why investing activity? So because the definition of investing activity mentions that any any outflow of cash or any out, uh, cash move cash flow movement for increasing your returns of your company for increasing the returns of your company is an investing activity is an investing activity so then what is operating activity operating activity anything related to the operations of the company is called as operating activity then what is financing activity anything pertaining to arranging the finance anything arranging the finance for the company okay funding is called as financing activity now so see here it is uh, acquired debentures for a uh, non-group entities to increase returns. So it's an investing activity. Now, Cabello uh, company financed the acquisition of Trudos company by acquiring a bank loan. Now this bank loan is what? This bank loan is what? It's a financing activity. Why? Because you are. it is a source of finance for the company. It is a source of finance for the company. 
नाउ अगेन कबीलो कंपनी ऑल्सो हैड एन ओवर ड्राफ्ट बैलेंस ओवर ड्रॉन बैंक बैलेंस ना वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ ओवर ड्रॉन बैंक बैलेंस What is the meaning of overdrawn bank balance? So the overdrawn bank balance basically is a loan repayable on demand. Loan repayable on demand. Now, as and when the bank asks you, you have to pay it off. Okay, you have to pay it off. So now it will be forming part of cash and cash equivalent. It is a forming part of cash and cash equivalent. Okay. Now the overdrawn bank. Balance fluctuates regularly. But if the question says that this overdrawn balance is permanent in nature. it is permanent in nature then this will become financing activity okay if it is short term in nature if it is short term in nature short term commitment highly liquid it is cash and cash equivalent if it is permanent non current in nature long term in nature then it is a financing activity is that clear to everyone is that clear to everyone so this completes our discussion of question number 1 and i believe you would have enjoyed the session okay i i will request all of you to leave your feedback in the comment box so that uh, and also share this video with your friends and if you are new to this channel please subscribe this channel so that uh, you get relevant acca updates and yes updates about fr and sbr2 in the tomorrow session in the tomorrow session we will be discussing about the ethics and remember i am going to discuss an approach which i told i am discussing the approach of ethics which almost 80 to 90% students don't know the approach so i'll be discussing that approach as well in the tomorrow's class so remember that you are must joining the tomorrow's class now tomorrow's class will be happening at 6 pm indian time 6 pm tomorrow indian time 6 pm tomorrow indian time okay so see you guys tomorrow see you guys tomorrow bye bye and don't forget to leave comments to leave your comment in the chat comment box not here after the video gets ended leave your uh, comments in the comment box okay Thank you bye bye